A couple months ago, I traveled to Baltimore and visited the locations that are of importance in Sister Kathy and Joyce's case. Gemma and I met up with many people you have heard from already, and a few you will hear on a future podcast. Be aware that this audio was recorded while we were walking and talking along the streets. It was pretty windy, so I apologize ahead of time for the noise from wind and passing vehicles. This is Billy's niece, Sharon. Gemma and I met up with her on Monumental Avenue, where she showed us the home where her grandmother raised her father and his brothers, including Billy. Next to the home is the very woods Sister Kathy's body was discovered in. Very different. It was pristine white. That porch was a beautiful gray. It was clean. It was just very different than what it is now. And it seemed to me, because I was a little girl, it was huge, like a castle. But when I look at it now, it's funny. But uh, none of that was there. There was a garage. I don't know if it's still there. On the other side of the driveway, it was a freestanding garage that my grandfather used as a shop, mechanic shop. My father used to have show cars and things like that. So I guess that's what they did in there. But all this stuff was not here in the back. Seems to me the woods were a lot thicker than they are now. This could have been the logging that have gone on in there or whatever. Maybe it's just thinned out. I don't know. But, or maybe it's just my memory, but it seemed to be a lot thicker. The only thing here was this house. All of that going that way is since we lived here. There were two little boys who lived in this house that we used to play with, and that was about it, and some kids up the street that were our age. That's basically it. So it's my family home. How far away from here was Kathy from? What would you say it is? A, is it a half a mile, a quarter mile? quarter mile. It's up the street and around. I measured the distance from the home Billy grew up in to the location Kathy was left. It's almost 1,000 feet, or 0.18 of a mile. In fact, if you were to walk from this house through the woods in a straight line to the back of the Smith shop, Kathy was found almost exactly on the halfway point in the woods. Remember Sharon's dad saying, we killed a woman and put her behind the shop. This is what I was talking about. When we were doing the podcast, I'd never met Gemma and I never knew where she was found. And so I asked Gemma, show me exactly where she was found. And she pointed to that tree. And I literally walked up to that tree and I go, it was that way. And I don't know why uh, I said it. Like I, I, yeah, did. I don't know why I said it. So then we got in the car and we drove here and got out and we talked to the man here. And he was like, oh, yeah, when I bought this place in the 80s, I was told she was found right there. And he pointed to like where all that big equipment is right now. So I went and I stood on a rock there and I was like, oh my God, are there railroad tracks? And I realized I was looking at the back of my grandfather's shop. Oh. You literally can see it from where those tractors are sitting. But that is not where she was found. She was found here. And that's why I asked. That's good. Yes. Oh, this? Okay. Yep. Imagine that because awesome. yeah, not this was new and since a year that Gary and I were here. <laughs> Look at all that bug. Yep. Yeah, no, none of this here. This was all wood, and you told me it was just right here. This is a, this was all clear. Yep. Oh. There was a house at the bottom. There was a house at the bottom here. So if you can just imagine looking at the other side of the hill now of where we just were. That house was right there. And how body was found right up there, which I wrote. You know, the guy that owned this property like a million years ago, his name was Smuck, Smuck Dunn. And there were uh, leaking containers of something under the ground that nobody knew about until all this was turned over. And so there were all these, like, violations and wearing metal CP. stuff. Now well, well, there's okay. a dog kennel here. I bet those dogs have two heads. <laughs> weird stuff. I oh, wouldn't no. want to live here. <laughs> yeah. But when we actually walked in, it was past the last house on the, that was on the left. And then they, then the wood starts. And then across from the sand and gravel, there's a dried way. Well, that would fast. make the 100-yard theory make more sense. And then... In the woods. So the plaque that Jean's family put faces the road. And you can actually see it in the road. Yeah, it was very busy down here. I'm sure that we kept it. So if they walked in that sideway, then they would be getting on that crest of that hill, right? Or you think there was another hill? I'm just so confused by that. It all looks different. Right. This is all 
grown there. Just I mean, like, we moved from the woods to in front of the Schmitz family's old shop. So I remember talking to a guy that has a shop down there, and he didn't remember it, but you wouldn't have come at it from this side. Right. Because of the railroad tracks. Right. And now 95 also, right? Yeah. Cuts through. So two sections. Right. I can see this. But back in the day, my and mom says, oh, when boys, meaning my father and his brothers, when they were teenagers and young men, my mother said they used to drag race back here along the railroad right. tracks. So I guess there's always been like a so dirt nice. road. This was high activity for my family. It's an area they are very familiar with. Yeah, that was my grandfather's shop. And literally out the back door of the shop, you look straight up the hill. It's where I was standing when you all came down and worked. That's where I thought she was found. The bottom of- yep. We kept going down the bottom. Still read that. Yep. So it is uh, close. Okay. And wait till you see the apartment. What you have to do from here to get to the apartment, you're going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> and where Billy's apartment was right. compared to where the car was. This conversation happened in the car on the way to Kathy's carriage house apartment. Keep in mind driving from the location she was found back to where she was abducted and her car returned isn't a direct route. It's full of many twists and turns onto smaller roads. But what are the chances that Billy lives next to Kathy and Russ, just happened to dump Kathy behind the shop that Billy's dad owned? If Kathy was never moved, this would have been the opposite of the route they would have taken to dump her. Because we're heading to the carriage house apartments now, which is where they would have picked Sister Kathy up our car. And it kind of didn't make much sense to me. Is the two hunters that found her said they were hunting in that wooded area, found her. There's not really much animal spot. So they could have been hatching the squirrels. But that doesn't seem. Another weird thing is they were not from this part of Baltimore. So really? they traveled a oh, while to get over here. So they went to that particular area. Yeah. Wow. I know Gemma was being, they were hired or paid to discover her right. body or possible. Right. Either given some money to, or the police were like, because we believe that Scannell was involved. He was buddy buddy with Asphalt. Skinnell's the officer, the responding officer. Right. So it's possible if the dad's a sex offender, that they're all buddy. Hey, you can do this and we will we'll make sure that you're not. Get out for it. They pulled up outside the carriage house apartments, possibly in a location Billy could have parked along the street across from his apartment. Well, that was my uncle Bill right there. Kathy's was right there. And her car was returned right where that, see where that yellow curb is, where it's the yeah. driveway now? Right there. That's where the car was sitting. That's okay. what you pictured in the newspaper. Okay. See the car that's parked along the sidewalk? Yeah. Okay. If Jerry parked where we are, and there were cars parked parallel there, he would not necessarily have seen the car sticking out. Because it was not sticking out any farther than the width of that car. It was not sticking out into traffic. So I'm not defending him. I'm just saying. Where's Kathy's apartment, though? Around on the other side. But this was Billy's in this building. So this far. used to be open. You used to be right. able to walk through here. You can't See go those through now. things like that. Right. Those were there. Was, it was open. We could walk up and around. Yeah. But all I'm saying is that everybody who's saying they would have seen the car. Right. Michelle lived in that those? lantern court. Wow. I know. Michelle Stant lived there. She did at the time. And she came to the nun's house because some of her friends were playing music with the nuns. And she came over to see the nuns, which is around on the other side, but you could get through here. And yeah. the school up here, where all these kids are coming from, is the one that Edgar 
just trolling for all. So it's all so close. So close. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And although we had to jump over a couple of exits on the beltway, as the crow flies, it's very close. Yeah. Yep. So we can go up and around with Sharon. Yeah. Hey, Cher. Yep. Nobody else got the email about wearing black boots today. Oh, it's, good. I know. At least we stand, but I like yours better than mine. I like those heels. Those are so cheesy. <laughs> you want to go up and around? Yeah. Yes, you yeah. And just like Abby says in the documentary, that's the school where Edgar was cruising. Oh, so wow. look at that. Yeah. Wow. And that's where Russell taught. Right. Oh so God. Kathy took the car to school. Yeah, and she was. Yeah. So their parking spaces would have been here. Look around here. Whereas car would, so you can see under the cover of dark, five, five sprints. And, yeah. Yeah, your home. and he wouldn't have parked in Kathy's spot. Kathy right. would have parked over here, right? Yeah, I think yeah. five was hers. Right here? Yeah, I think five was hers. When Pat Gilner moved in with Russell it's like a tenth grade difference and talked shape. about being afraid, well, I'm she sure. said she'd get her like book bag and stuff and run to the apartment because right. she had to run around. Wow. So this was her apartment right here, that half under the ground. She was the end. Here. If somebody just gave you those facts and nothing else. So which one was Billy's? He was down here. He was the one. That's what I thought. And behind my uncle Bill's apartment is the laundry. Thursday. Yes, and this used to be a lot. It was open. After we left the carriage house apartments, we met up with Joyce's two brothers, Don and Pat Malecki. At the location her car was discovered, on the day, after she disappeared. No, th Just, this is all new. Okay. This, this was like, this was called Boontown for a reason. That's, what does that mean? It's just a Boontown. Yeah, right. it, it's just something that's been around. This, this was all stores all the way, way up to the... Okay. Yeah. Because I talked to John Benham, the, the cameraman. I think you've met him, right? When they came to your house? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, John yes, yes, from yes, Baltimore. Yes, yes. And he said, it's the pink wall and the parking lot. And this is your okay. address. And he said, was, I thought, he said, the convenience store, Lord Joyce, Green Guys, Pound Hills, is far. But, well, like I say, this, from here on, this is all new. What, tell that, me what's new. This building? On the other side. Okay. It's, it's what's all, this place? Little bit of nothing. Now it's church. It's it, obviously, it obviously wasn't built okay. back in the original. Oh, he's 49 years. Yeah, I know, that. but that you can't be that old. Ago. Wait, you're not that old. <laughs> I thought you had your 29th birthday not that ago. <laughs> yeah. And you just heard stories when you found yeah. yeah. it. I'm just glad to see you. Okay, now, who all is going? Waiting for one more car. Right, right. Here. and that's it. But I do want to, can you talk to us a little bit about if, you're, if it's not upsetting for you, about, I know Joyce had a process when she was going to see her boyfriend of calling him first. It, Pat has some things he would like to explain to you okay. how it worked going on to a military base and talking to somebody 49 years ago. I right. couldn't tell you what it is now. And he has some concerns about what we her. Her flowers and whatever. Heard from us? Different throughout. Remember, we've been through some meetings. Yeah. And we went, led me with, with the FBI agents. Okay. And the Baltimore County okay. cold case. Okay. You came to one at my house. Right. That, yeah. That, that was okay. Yeah. Okay. No, what I'm saying is we just heard, and you start thinking, you know, how okay. things, you know, were and whatever. And then you hear some different things. And Pat can elaborate, elaborate on this was the call that we were at a meeting. This wasn't, you weren't at this particular meeting, but he said that they had proof that she made a phone call from this phone booth to her boyfriend, but that didn't happen. He, even the okay. FBI verified, he said, no, no way, it didn't happen. No phone call? Nope. No. Okay. Now, the, the, the theory was that she pulled in here to use the phone booth. Okay. No. Okay. I was telling Daryl that uh, in 1967, Baltimore had riots. At the time, Joyce was working in Baltimore, Washington Boulevard. 
Okay, where was she walking? We were. Was it a paper company? I said a liquor store. We yeah. heard that. We yeah. Were just, well, not, uh, once again, it's a brain bar. We've been having a lot of them lately. We were hey, wild don't wild laugh because your time's coming. <laughs> uh, getting back to what I was saying. Yeah, go ahead. Was why was her car here? Okay. Okay. In 67, we had to ride. She was working at home. Right. She was using my Barracuda to go back and forth to work. Okay. Who switched cars with her lab? No, this, no. this was way before. This, we'll get oh, to that. Okay. This I'm sorry. Before. She was using my Barracuda to go back and forth to work. Yeah. Because uh, he was worked at the Coast Guard yard with my father, and he was, they were car born. So. Which street were you on in? Williamstown? Yeah. Laverne. Laverne. Okay. That's one that has some of the older individual homes on it, right? They're all It's old. not like in metal fans. Uh, getting back to what <laughs> I was saying, <laughs> Tell try me. to keep your mouth shut down. <laughs> I know it's going to be hard. Start raising your hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now, I'll, I'll keep you in tow. Okay, I'll stand here and be good. I got, and like I said, she was going back and forth to Baltimore. In my Barracuda, I borrowed a double barrel shotgun. I put two rounds in. And the back seat of the Barracuda flipped down. I put the shotgun with the two rounds in there. The breech was open. And I covered it. And I said, if anybody tries to attack you, don't even think about it. Just grab that thing. Don't worry about windows and whatever. But the thing that I got in her head was lock your doors. Okay. Now, this happened in November when the to pay on the car here. Why was she here? She just didn't drink. She didn't use a phone booth. There is no phone booth, okay? The only thing that I'm thinking is that it's possible that she pulled in here because she was pulled over. Maskell's brother was in the police department. He had all them cops on his side. So if that's the case... So if she pulled in here, then she would have opened her window or unlocked her door if the cop asked for whatever. Right. That's my theory. Then the fact that uh, the tire marks were found at the scene where she was, my father's tire coat tracks. Oh, I didn't know they that. Matched. Okay. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, the police have still got his tires. Because they took the tires off. That's what I heard anyway. That was from the FBI agent. Yeah, same place. Like said, we had some meetings. We had yeah. two FBI agents that were put on the case. And we had Baltimore County cold right. case, whatever her name was. Of course, we haven't heard anything. To say. Robin. Yeah, yes. And go ahead. The other thing that I remember was that this was a bar. This building right here. Yeah. Okay. The police interviewed everybody that was at that bar, the bar owner. The bar owner said he remembers seeing my father's car here when he come out to smoke a cigarette. When he left that night, the car was still here, but it was parked in a different spot. Okay. So that's why right. apparently they took the car over okay. to where she, her body was right. found. And the other thing, too, that I wanted to bring up with you, and I don't know if you were aware of it, the lawyer who represented the girls that were abused, okay? Suitor. She wanted to talk to Darlene, my sister. <laughs> Our sister. Our sister. I won't say anything. Because I got my train of thought. He was so easy, too. <laughs> when, she, when Darlene and her husband got there, she took Darlene into another room and asked her, if she had been molested. And she said no. But she asked, why do you ask? One of the women who were abused told the lawyer that she overheard Maskell, or uh, Joyce, telling Maskell, if she ever touched my sister Darlene, I'm going to turn you in. Now. Darlene wasn't even in the family yet, was she? Of course she was. Oh, She's wait. Sister. Oh, That's Darlene. Sister. Yeah. Okay, Darlene. I'm thinking of Diane. Sorry. Yeah. No, Diane. Darlene it's, came to my house with you guys. Mary. Right. It, 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 okay. Mary, yeah, right. you're right. Okay. But that 
Why that wasn't brought out, I don't know. Because the lawyer knows who she talked to, and if she actually heard Maskell or Joyce saying something to Maskell, mm. there's a connection right there between the two of them. Because so, they kept saying with Joyce there was no connection with Maskell. Right. So anyway. But Darlene was how much younger than Joyce? Two years. Okay. Two so or three maybe years. She two was, three years yeah. And she went to Keogh. No. Oh, no. she did not. No. Okay, St. Clements. But, but Maskell was living in Lansdale, right. down the street from where we lived. Yep. To, that? And she, he was mm-hmm. doing, two streets over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was doing, I guess it was you know, Sunday services or something, because the father always made us go. I need to ask you about, okay, I talked to a young woman who said her sister was one of Joyce's best friends. And that she used to watch Joyce and her sister get ready to go out, put makeup on and stuff. Like, was there a house next door that her friend or somebody lived in? Uh, the girl's name might have been Donna. Donna Noritel? No? And she said that they used to make fun of Maskell while they were getting dressed to go out. And they'd be, like, like imitating him and making faces and stuff. And so she knew that Joyce didn't like it. But she also told me that, and I assumed this was accurate, that when Joyce would pick up her boyfriend on the base, she would go to, she would call him from here. He would get ready. She would pull up in front of his barracks, beep two times, and he would come out. And the night that she disappeared, there was a two time beep, and he came out, and nobody was there. Does that make any sense to you? A uh, couple of things when yeah. before I was cut off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, by somebody. Really <laughs> Can you tell he's the oldest oh, yeah. Yeah. brother? Yeah. And nothing, oh, is that how it is? Nothing changed. <laughs> yeah. No, you asked about the car, how she wound up with the car. I worked that. Geno's. It's like a McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Which one did you work at? <laughs> on Papsville Avenue. Okay, I know that one. And it's not it's not terribly far because a couple of times I had to walk oh, home. Yeah. But this particular night, I had taken my parents' car and she drove up because she had a, an old Pontiac. It was old. And wherever she was born, she probably felt better. Or, like safer. And yeah, in the, the newer car. Uh-huh. And because it was only two, two years old. And she came up and said, to your switch. I said, man, no matter what. She's going to go home, yeah. yeah. And that was that's how that came about, no more, no less. You know what? People were making a huge deal over that on the, on the Internet. They're like, what's the big secret about why Joyce traded cars? And, yeah. like, and you, one of me. you told me that was Yeah, crazy. believe me. Like I said, her car was old. But it, it was, I'm sure it was trustworthy. If you're going shopping in that time of year, why not take it? And nobody even cared. Also, I was looking through... Some of our stuff at home, our paperwork. Mm-hmm. A wife, Diane, went to Keo. Okay, she's my contact. I know, but she can type faster. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> good. Okay, she can t t t t t t. I c c Diane. Yes, and I. We have a 1969 Keo yearbook, and I was looking at where there was Sister Cat. There's an article in there about Sister Cat. There's a picture of my wife graduating eighth grade and if that's not sister kathy next to her i'll do something eighth grade from where st clement's no uh, keo eighth grade yeah no eighth grade would have been high school no went to high school in ninth grade okay but kathy was eighth grade was not keo Keo was nine, ten, eleven. Well, maybe it was a year for it, but my wife went there. Okay, from, and, and from so, Greed all the way up okay, until yeah. until she came over to Baltimore County. Okay, so I just thought that was odd because I kept looking at this. Is that her? Is that her? And I'm looking in course. the sixty-nine year. Yeah, I'm okay. looking. I'm putting my glasses on. I'm getting another pair of glasses. Might have been. Was do you know if I could ask Diane this? If she was involved in drama club or no, no, he graduated Diane. in sixty-nine. From Geo. And from eighth grade. That's what's on that's what's on the photo. Did I just confuse things? I well, should have brought it with Geo me. was ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh and twelfth, not eighth. So eighth grade would have been St. Clements. Okay. Huh? So No, she did not my wife did not go to St. Clement. Okay. Do you know where she went? Where she went to grade school? 
Where was she sent on the Holy Trinity? I think that'd be Arbuta somewhere. A Catholic school or a public yeah, school? Yeah, I'm sure it was a Catholic school, but her parents were... Catholics and Catholics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's what happened with... Because I remember that, you know, okay. plain as... So, be as far if as, I remember in The Keepers, the photograph, when Donald was with the filmmakers... He was, came over here by himself. Right. Was yeah. The car was sitting right over there, like next to where that one is. And I can look back in the movie, but that's the outside yeah. of the building. Yeah. And that's, or that's where it was found. found. That's where the car was found. Yeah, because it was removed. Who who found the car? Our other brother. Okay. Jerry. And when did he find the car? Next day. Was, were you guys out looking? Yeah. Was it like a yeah. concentrated? Yeah. We took off from work and we started looking at My mother told, because this doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. We're not the type of family that have sleepovers and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Very odd that she went out and never came back. So she was very concerned. And she told my brother she was supposed to go to whatever shopping center and over here. And my, my brother came over here and goes, there's the yeah. car. And reported right away. Huh. So that's how that came about. So I think her keys and her purse were in the front seat. Never that... found her purse. Never okay. found her pocket. Okay. K- were the keys in the car? I think so. So somebody drove it back here. Yeah. yeah, and they said whoever drove it back, there was dirt on the gas pedal, the brake pedal didn't have any dirt on. The person drove with both feet. Yes, and break. That sounds familiar. That's yeah, what happened in Kathy's case. Yeah. That the car that was returned, Kathy's car, the person did yeah. with both. They did, they did no. say that. And okay. like I said, they fell on the fire, tire, tire tracks at the scene. So. Now, we still have that outstanding FOIA request that's five years old that Abby submitted to the FBI. <laughs> And they're still saying it's awaiting an analyst. But we talked to Gary Childs, who's the, de- mm-hmm. the detective that was on. And he said that there w- he didn't tell us what, but he said that the FBI or somebody had met with you guys and had given you, returned some jewelry no, no, we maybe. We or... never got that. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Oh, we, we it's got never been returned. Because they were asking us if we had anything. Now, this was a, a long time ago. That had Joyce's, no, mm-hmm. we did there was nothing mm-hmm. exchanged. He also said, and since he said it to all of us, I can say it to you. Yeah, you, that, can say what, you can say whatever right, you want. That, that the FBI told them that after 25 years, they destroy a I, lot of I stuff, okay? But Gary knew uh, an FBI agent, correct me if I'm wrong, that went and found the slides from when she, her body was recovered to see what was under the slides, mm-hmm. right? And most But of, not from the FBI. Where did he no, say it came from? from the medical, yeah, from, yeah, yeah, medical yeah, examiner. Yes, yes. So you already know this. Mm-hmm. So they looked at the slides, and this guy who was looking at them, well, what did you say about the fingerprints? They're trying to extract DNA from the finger. We heard that. From the ink. Yes. From the ink. Yeah, that's a new process. They yeah. Have. Yeah, they, yeah, that was all explained okay. to us. And that most of what was under the slides was too damaged to identify. Does that seem get any results? This was an ongoing thing. So why did you think there's evidence being held back from all of you? Do you think somebody's hiding something? I've never heard of any kind of a, a murder case that they get rid of any evidence, period. Whether it be FBI, whether yeah. it be anything. And why was we were told at one time that they gave the case to Inter Arundel County. That never happened. Mm-hmm. Never happened. Mm-hmm. No, you probably... I, did, I did hear that case her name that's Robin. Who? Robin Teal. Yeah. That she was supposed to be getting some from the FBI the fingerprints or whatever. Uh-huh. And that they were going to pursue the DNA thing. From okay. that. So we never heard any more about well, that. She told me that see when Kathy and Joyce, because the times were so close together and the FBI was responsible for Joyce and Baltimore County was responsible for Kathy, mm-hmm. that there was a joint task force and that they were going to see if they could connect the two. And that gave Robin a foot in the door to be able to look at the FBI files. So sure. she couldn't copy anything. She couldn't bring anything with her. But she said she was able to look at some things. And I think somebody shared some of that with you. Did she come to your house and yeah. to somebody's yeah. house? and? Yeah. Well, that's what we heard. She, they haven't 
they're not ignoring you and they are still, we just saw Gary and I'd never met him before. He was very open. Do you guys think the two were connected? What's your, believe it, yeah. Do you? I definitely believe it. Yeah. yeah. yeah what do you think? It well, could be. Yeah. Yeah. There are two other women? Yes. Yeah. Grace Montagna, who was, do you know where Westport is on the other side of Lakeland? Yeah. On the other side of Lansdowne. Yeah. Okay. And Pam Conyers. And then there was a young man named Danny Crochetti, who was over at Our Lady of the could, could have been connected. Yeah. 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 Where are your heads with all of this? Are you guys like frustrated? This has been going on for 40, 50, 40, 40, 50, 40, 50, 49 50. years. Now, nobody's ever contacted us until the keepers. It's and it seemed like after the keeper, that was great. And they have be done it excellent. And there was a little bit of the other thing that we've heard when we met with the FBI agents. We're sitting here. We don't hear nothing. Nobody tells us mm-hmm. anything. The FBI agents told us that. What happened was they come here, they, they got everybody out, it was in the bar that they could, okay? But her boyfriend and anybody that was in that day room at the mm-hmm. time, they interviewed them. Mm-hmm. They also searched okay. for me, even the rooftops, looking for any her purse or really? wallet oh, or anything. Like somebody could throw it up Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah. See, we thought Where they her- did nothing. Where her body was found, I understand they put a coffer dam on. They blocked the water. They had her body was found partially in the water. Okay. And in order to go in there for evidence, it was swamp at the time, not anymore. Mm-hmm. But they put a coffer dam up and went in there searching for evidence. Couldn't find anything. Now, nobody told us any of this right. when it was going on. So as far as we knew, nothing was being. We all got stuck in the same place because when it's a cold case, they don't like the information goes one way. They don't tell us anything because let's say they told me something that was in the files and then somebody gets arrested for this. I could be hauled into court and they could say, Gemma saw the files, so we're throwing this whole thing out. But so I'm just skipping my mind. I need to ask you guys. Oh, Joseph Maskell was counseling soldiers that had come back from Vietnam with PTSD and were stationed at Fort Meade. And I always wondered if maybe he could have picked somebody that was, like, pretty out there to do the dirty work. Because I don't want to upset you, so tell me to stop. But apparently Joyce was found the way our American soldiers were trained to kill the Vietnamese. We heard because that. it's fast. With like, not to interrupt you, but when you have a thought, you don't want to lose it. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm right there with you. No, because Steve uh-huh. said to the FBI about the rope. How was it tied? Do you still have anything sold to tie tie not differently? Sure. Then I would. I would just I tie a bow tie or something. That's mm-hmm. the way I am. It's frustrating. It's frustrating as can be because we feel that. They're just waiting for us to die off, which is just happening. Yeah. And it'll all go. We'll prevent that. Yeah, it's not going to go away. He's 29. <laughs> we appreciate that somebody's still involved. Yeah. Are yeah. you kidding? Yeah. This is really important to us. And what happens with you guys not being given information was wrong. Oh, and yeah. We, so, we, yeah. yeah. We're it, fighting it's for It's a possibility you. that we didn't ask the right questions. I don't know. I don't know. And, but, and how often does this happen? Hopefully never. <laughs> and if that is the case where evidence was destroyed many years later, that's not okay. No. And the great thing about a podcast is we have a platform to create change. And so that's something that needs to change. If that's true, it needs to be changed. Yeah, somebody definitely. You know. So we, you would totally have our support. We packed up and followed Don and Pat Malecki to the location at Fort Meade, where Joyce's remains were discovered. It takes about 10 minutes today to drive from where her car was discovered to where her remains were found. This area is now protected land. When we arrived at the entrance to the grounds, the gate was closed and locked. So, we waited for a long time, and just by luck, a park ranger passed us on his way home. Pat explained why we were there and the reason we wanted to visit the location by the river. So the park ranger escorted us onto the property and followed us to where Joyce was found. Even when you got onto the Fort Meade base back then, this area really wasn't a common place to be. 
This is part of Fort Meade. Oh, it is. Okay. okay. But it is a return. The, the, the perimeter road goes through the whole thing, but I don't know where mm. it up. Okay, so was there any... Okay. Abby and I looked into this. We went down to the central library because we could not find anything online that covered Joyce's death because one of the papers was on strike and the News American that covered it, it's all in microfiche where you have to turn the wheel and look at the articles. And there were a lot of articles and parents and it was very sad. But was there ever an article that talked about two men that found her that would find the names? Remember anything? No, like I that? don't remember. No, do you? We know that two hunters also found Catherine. Right, we were just talking we about, about that. Uh, yeah. We yeah. In doing some research, the older one that found Kathy is a registered sex offender. And I know, and they were from Middle River, which is where Maskell had his boat, and Spinell went out on the boat with me. And there would have been no reason for them to be all the way over Hellthorpe shooting squirrels and rabbits. Well, so, from, as I said, from what the FBI said, the hunters that found Joyce's body were mushroom hunters. They weren't hmm, bang, bang, shoot them up. And I know there's a lot of people that do that. They go around the for mushrooms. Don't they take like pigs or dogs or something? <clears throat> I thought that the newspaper said that they were deer hunters setting up a deer or something. Like a deer blind. Well, they, a deer they, blind. That's what the word was. They damn sure wouldn't do it in a reserve. That's yeah, what I thought true. was weird. Yeah, when I read that in the newspaper, yeah. I was like, well, why are you in a reserve doing that? That's just like where Sister Kathy was found. That's a residential push. When you go down yeah. there, it's, 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 I didn't it's see any squirrels. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I don't think he would hunt there. Like I said, if you go down this gate, right. as you go up the road, there'll be a building on the left. Uh-huh. Okay. And it says stop. It's or pass or whatever, but I never did. And immediately after that, it make a left hand turn. And as you go down the road, maybe a half a mile, and it's all wood. You'll come to a bridge. You stop before the bridge, and you look on the other side and look straight down where the river turns. That's where her body was found. Let me ask you this: the files that the FBI has. Even though they said they destroy things after 25 years, they told us they have 4,000 pages that an analyst has to go through and redact and everything. Redact. Yeah. Okay. Now, for 49 you have, years, yeah, so have any indication about anything that's in there or that is that the stuff or they lying? Was it thrown away? No, we heard there was a lot of pages. Somebody said that. But once again, we are completely 100% out of the picture until this came about. We knew we, now if somebody had passed some information over to our parents, they did not say anything to us. I was just a snot. Was kid. I'm not. <laughs> did you also notice the coincidence that they're saying that this evidence was destroyed at the same period of time the Doe Row and the Row and Doe case is happening? There are a lot of hot, hot, we're talking about politicians all the way up to really important people in Baltimore. And they were all taking care of each other. Because they exactly. Were and it does happen. They are being serviced yeah. with Maskell's girls. It does happen. Yeah. The detective also shared with us another important detail about if the evidence is being destroyed at that time, there's a lot of question on why would you be destroying it when you could have tested it with DNA that so, wasn't available back then. Right. That was a time in the 90s where DNA was very advanced. We, again, our brother-in-law, he was a policeman. He went to Baltimore City and went to Baltimore County. And he had never heard any like a case like this that you would get rid of evidence ever, ever. Now, if something happens to the building, like it blows up or burns down, now that's something entirely different. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what we've been hearing, and we're questioning everybody. <laughs> right up. So are we. And you don't, so. it's sad to say, but you really don't trust anybody. What they're telling you. Now, these young FBI agents, they were at that meeting. They were all going, hello, and everything. And we thought, oh, boy, oh, boy. And we were talking and said, have you heard nothing or anything? That's right. It's frustrating. Yeah, I believe it. Here comes a car. My employee leaving. I'll hold the gate. <laughs> <laughs> I could go talk to him. <laughs> What's that all about? No, it has Maryland plates.
Look at this little stand. I know, this <laughs> person's spoiler. What are you doing? Okay, so... I need to get into the... Oh, they probably have four of those cameras around here. I couldn't control it. He's over here now. You think they're quite trying security is happening too? It might be. I don't think No? No. Did they ever talk? First of all, who? Once these hunters, did they call the police? Did they call the base command? Or what did they do? Uh, you no know? Clue. Okay. I could imagine that when they found them, like I said, there's a building up here. Okay. Where you're supposed to stop oh, yeah, and get a pass. Right. Yeah. I'm okay. sure that's where they went. Oh, and then okay. they notified the army. And then you contact, who contacted you guys? Hey, Pat. How long did it take to get to there? Yeah. This man's being very. No, I was just wondering what bridge. Yeah. We have two bridges. Why do we have to go to contact me? Take a left. That's the old Ford Bridge. Now that's a new bridge. Because the old bridge, uh, they did. It was an old army bridge, and the tank right there. What a pass. That's our cousin. Yeah. Because they couldn't have gone over that old bridge. That ended up in the drain. Like that's why that. That's, let's go in. Okay. Uh, 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 Thank Now, that area there wasn't as high as it is now. It was low, and she was partially in the water. Body. She had sticks in her hair and dirt and sand on her face. Didn't even clear up. That's something that'll stay with me the rest of my life. Now, if you take this road and follow it down, that is the backside of Tipton Airport. And where is Kimbro from here? It's the base hospital, It's right? a base hospital, but I couldn't tell you. And they handled, did they handle the autopsy, and, yes. or was that turned they, over to? I, that, that I can't tell you. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. I know that her body was taken to Kimbrough. Kimbrough. Right. And what they did there, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Earlier, you mentioned that mushroom hunters found her that's what they, the fbi said would they have been mushroom hunting in november do you think i have no idea it was warm that year and this was just right after kathy disappeared so we know it went up to the 60s so i, yeah, right. I don't know yeah, yeah. That's, i don't know that, that's no. just what the fbi said because well, initially we heard there was just hunters and then we didn't find out until we went to rosemary's and met with the FBI agents. They're the ones that said they were mushroom hunters. Is there a road or a trail that goes close to where she was this found? Was that's it's, what they're saying. Here, yeah. Yeah. That's the old, yeah. Where that and, and stone. Notice on the old road. Well, up. Yeah. After, yeah. You yeah. Turn, after you made your left. And then all of a sudden. Road. You know where that stone is, Gemma? That's where the old road was. Hunters in here? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Maybe it was September through white. Okay. So maybe it was. I don't know where mushroom came from, but. Yeah. What about mushroom hunt? Would they have mushroom hunted in November? November? You don't, I, don't know. I know there are people who come in and they go after all the fiddlehead. Fiddlehead ferns. We've had people come in and get them to pay and they're going to sell them at their restaurant. What are those things? Fiddlehead ferns. Sell them at the restaurant. They look real prehistoric. 
I think they look the same as they did. But I don't think that there's a, they're in a lot. Come on. I've always thought that you've got to be growing pot out. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a guy doing a herbarium, and he's done a comprehensive plant survey of every plant on the rent. He's got 4,000 specimens. Really? And he's never found pot. Wow. Um, and now that it's legal, kind of. <laughs> Are you a ranger? How long have you worked here? Nine years. You used you... to work in Florida. Oh. It was better change. Florida's really? the same day every day. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like season. Yeah. And now all the Snow. retired people look real little oh. in those big cars. Yeah. Who have the seasons? Spring. You know. Fall. Fall great. Do you know about this case? Have you heard about it? No. Harry area over here was a lot lower because they actually put a coffer down <laughs> and pumped the water out in order to go in and look for any kind of evidence. Right. Oh, I don't know how, how they managed to do that. You said that was the old bridge that you found over there. I'm surprised someone that just didn't drive across the bridge didn't see her. Oh, no, this wasn't driving. No, this was training for tanks. And a tank for act down this way oh, further. Mm-hmm. And she was found the next day. Right. Hey, man, yeah, not like Sister years. Kathy. Sister yeah. Kathy stayed there for a while. Right, till January. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this oh, wasn't like this. Well. This bridge wasn't here. <laughs> That's what he was just explaining to us, giving us what's going on. And you can see old bridge right. 49 years ago. <laughs>